I'm in a place called the Lovelock Cave, and I'm investigating a story of the red-headed cannibal giant. The giants fought a war against the Paiute Indians out there. And then uh, the Paiutes chased the red-headed cannibal giants into here. This is Lovelock Cave. So uh, I'm going in Lovelock Cave and looking for signs of the red-headed cannibal giant. Cave goes down quite a ways down there. So, according to Sarah Winnemucca, the uh, red-headed cannibal giants made their last stand inside this cave after a three-year war with the Paiute Indians. The Indians threw brush and sticks down into the cave and lit a great fire. Evidence of the fire is all over the ceiling. It's black with soot from flames. The last of the red-headed cannibal giants went down to this location, the very base of the cave, where there was some oxygen remaining. Some tried to escape up this crevasse, but uh, the Indians shot them with bows and arrows and hit them with clubs as they exited. None of them survived, according to Sarah Winnemucca. Some of the last women and children huddled down here under this ledge where there was some oxygen, but uh, all of them eventually died. In 1911, prospectors came into the cave and found bones. When they were digging, they found bones, extremely large bones. Obviously, some... Uh, Unknown race of human, huge, giant, giant humans. And they called archaeologists at University of California, Berkeley, and told them what they found. Archaeologists came, and sure enough, they also found bones in here. All those bones are now missing. They've all disappeared. Either they're stolen or hidden. Nobody's really sure. What happened to uh, all of the evidence of the cannibal giants? Some of them might have, might have been some oxygen left down in there. So we're really, I wanna document all of the bottom corners of Lovelock Cave. I've seen some videos of this, but never with a really good light showing exactly what there is to be seen in here. So that's what I'm trying to do today. There's a large crevice up there. Could even be artifacts sort of hidden in the cracks. I'm sure people have gone through this extensively, but you never know it's missed. Of course you can't dig in here. Although I'm sure there's more artifacts under the under the uh, cave floor. It's an archaeological site. So according to legend, after the fire and during the war, the bodies of red-headed cannibal giants, which uh, is what we're really after, the skeletal remains to prove their existence. The bodies of red-headed cannibal giants were put on Thule rafts, put on rafts and taken to the Humboldt Lake, which is out there. Taken to the Humboldt Lake, floated out onto the lake with, uh, on rafts and sank into the lake. So we're gonna go out there, look around in the mud of the lake to see if we can possibly find evidence of the red-headed cannibal giants and put the story to rest once and for all. So this is the area where the ancient lake comes closest to the mountains. So this would have been a natural, a natural um, passageway or sort of a choke point. So, so there's only so much area here, like maybe a quarter mile. Um, this is an old, ancient Indian 
or Cannibal Giant Trail. We're gonna go up along this cliff face and we're gonna walk on the very edge of the mountain where the mountain meets the valley. So I figured there's a good area for maybe smaller caves or caches or anything like that along. And then we're gonna get to that point over there and then walk the base of the base of the lake bed, right where the alkali flat meets the uh, soil, the alluvial soil coming off from the mountain. So, so I'm thinking, you know, there could be something up here. There could also be something in the lake. So we go for a nice long sort of walk up there. And I'll meet you when I get to the, uh, let's go up to this, the base of that cliff. You see where that cliff is? Let's go up there and I'll meet you when I get there. So I actually hiked up, uh, I hiked up, this was the first cliff. And then uh, I thought I saw, uh, I thought I saw another cave from down below. And I think it's just these shadows, it's not really caves. And then, uh, yeah, so there's the second cliff. There's no cave there. I thought I saw another cave from down below. Unfortunately, it's just these shadows. Uh, hoping for a, uh, a new cave discovery up here. But anyway, here's the view of, uh, Here's the view of the lake, the ancient lake. So it stretched all the way to here. And uh, that was its extent on the uh, west. And then here's the, uh, here's the lake shore. We'll go down by the lake shore. Search around down there after I walk around the base of this cliff. Just looking for things on the base of the cliff. Walking along this cliff face. And then uh, over there I see, it looks like a, I don't know, like a potential caved in cave. Like maybe there's a cave under that rock. Um, and then there's some scree below it and then almost below the rock there looks like sort of a platform So uh, I walk over there and just take a look at this. So I was uh, I was way up there and then came down here to go Take a look at this uh, Cave we spotted on the other side. So I'm like up there right now looking for Remains or evidence of cannibal giants here so here's a Here's the rock overhang. And if you look at the material, it almost looks like cement. It's not, all around here is just shale, but it look, almost looks like it's cemented. So, uh, here, here, let's look in the cave. And it looks like it faces out here, but uh, potentially, because all that scree and fallen rock over the years would, uh, would come down this hill and then fill up this area. So potentially there is a cave here. And if you look carefully, I see a trail right there. So there was a trail. I mean, if you walk here a hundred times, you'll see your trail in a thousand years. It's just, that's how soft the desert is. So maybe that's a trail to it down underneath all this debris is an ancient cave. So, uh, then you look here, here's that platform. Here's the platform below the cave. So, I could easily see this being sort of excavated in ancient times. Maybe a platform entrance to this, uh, this cave. So, yeah, still out here looking for, uh, redheaded giant remains. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a careful survey below the cave. And then uh, see if there's anything down in that uh, that fall off area down below the cave. So I was uh, I was walking from that cliff face, and it's coming around here, and it looks sort of like a trail coming down along uh, along the side of the hill. But then I found this, and this is without question a rock stack. Um, the rock stack with a uh, couple different varieties of rocks, and look how there you are. Look how it's, it's, it's set together there where this one won't move because that one, uh, from any sort of weather. This is a definite rock stack. These look like they have collapsed off from the rock stack. Um, there's a couple different types of rock. This cemented gravel and then large pieces of shale. If you look at these, they're the perfect size to carry. You could carry these. One person could carry this. One in each hand on this. One person could carry that one. So this is a definite rock stack. Now why? I'm thinking, 
Honestly, I'm thinking burial mound. There's probably so many out here, but you just can't see them because the rock stacks have fallen. But this is, uh, I'm saying burial mound right there for either, I don't know, it's Paiute or it's big. It's really big. We're talking, it's 10 feet. So uh, yeah, maybe it's burial mound for a giant. So I was uh, walking along the uh, along this cliff face and coming this way, just scanning both here and to the side. And when I saw to my left, just really caught my attention. And then uh, here it is. You can see the stacked rock. This rock is just on there just precariously. You can see light through it. And then just above that is another one. And there's a very large rock that could be rolled. And then a super large rock. So, so this looks to me like some sort of trail. Now this, is a, this is a big rock. This is a big rock. I mean, I don't want to lift it. I, I hurt my back. Plus, I don't want to move it. Because it's been here for so long. Look at the, uh, look how long it's been there. It's just sort of, and it, 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 you see the way it fits. It's almost like it's, it's almost like it was worked right there. And then see the, the lichen is grown over maybe, I don't know, several hundred years. Oh, there's an X, look, a perfect X. A perfect X on the top of the rock. Wow, let's get a, look, get a picture of that. And then uh, the next signpost is here. Bring us up here to this signpost. Look at this one. They're the same. It's interesting how they, they, they change rocks. One is a, uh, look at that sitting on there. Almost looks like a, a head or something. Oops. It's got some lichen off. See, lichen's on the same side of this rock as it is on this rock, so it's been there a very long time. But these are definitely stacked on here. They no question about it. And then, see the trail goes up to this next one, which is probably moved here by by human hands. And then this one, I don't think can be moved unless you have, unless it's a giant, several giants. Almost maybe looks like it was up here. Like it was some sort of, a, that, you know, I think it was. That large stone was sitting there. The large stone was there. I'm sure. Look at that. Oops. I want to step on a rattlesnake. Could have been a cave up there. Or, or uh, something up here. Or this could be a burial mound too. And that's sort of like an ancient gravestone. There you go. I'm going to keep along here see what else I can find. Up that, uh, that row of ancient signposts. There's a stack of rocks here, here, they're here, stacked there. It's another rock moved by hand here. And then I was ready to give up, but then there's one, one right there that's like pointing with a finger. So, so it looks to me like some sort of indication of an ancient pathway. And then, so I walked up, walked up this draw, and this is what I found. An ancient signaling platform. So, that's definitely stacked there. It's this flat spot uh, high above the ancient lake. There's a step here. And then this I see is an ancient platform that uh, they stood right here and signal and signal down in the valley. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure there's arrowheads and what not in here. So, uh, yeah, here's a scraper. Good scraper there. Yeah, platform. The end of the ancient pathway. Overlooking the, uh, overlooking the ancient lake bed. Just a uh, short distance away from the red-headed giant cannibal cave. Right here. I was just up there at the lookout tower. Um, 
and then I follow, I followed that that those signposts up to the lookout tower. Spent some time in the lookout tower, and then I was coming down at an angle, and sure enough, just below that, I find another grave. So uh, yeah, pro I'm sure there's a grave. Stacked rocks, roughly in the shape, and they're finding all the stuff because this is the spot that the ancient lake is the closest to the cliffs. So uh, I'm sure that's why the lookout location was there because nobody could sneak past you because the lake is so close. I'm not, not sure how far it looks on camera, but it's probably, I don't know, 500 yards, 600 yards, and you can see everything there. So I'm sure that's why the lookout tower was there. And uh, yeah, here's the, uh, another one of those graves. So uh, I'm sure they're all over here. These are the ones that just haven't, uh, where the rocks haven't fallen away with erosion. So here we go, so I'm gonna continue that way. Walking down from, uh, from the other location. Quite a walk over to here. Then I come to come here and I'm always looking at the side of the cliff and looks to me like a pretty good cave right there. So, uh, and maybe some ledges to get up to it. Sort of almost a trail. And then, uh, yeah, it's quite a ways, quite a ways up there. But there's definitely a very remote cave in that cliff face. And uh, yeah, so that, that's an interesting one. I don't think I'm actually gonna go up there. because I've done so much hiking already, but uh, that'll be for another trip. But there's definitely a cave up there with a path that would uh, get you into it. So there yeah. you go. I was walking along these cliffs and I see it up here. Looks like a pretty good cave up there, which I can get to. So uh, I think I'll walk over there and see what that cave is like. Yeah, so I made it to this uh, this cave. Certainly looks like certainly looks like an ancient dwelling to me. I mean, it's just looks like it has maybe like some hollowed out shelves here. Looks like some shelves in the rock. Um, Up inside there, stratification. Probably was dug out more so there'd be more space. But you could definitely, even though, even though we're right here, it's definitely big enough to uh, stay inside just as it is. But I'm sure it was another two or three feet deeper here. Just so much has fallen down over the years. And then here's the larger part of the cave. It's grassy on the outside. Really sort of comfortable. And then, uh, yeah, so so there's uh, some more area hollowed out for like shelves or something. Probably they chipped out with their stone tools. And then I don't know how much further it goes back in here, but it looks like an animal has made its house here. And so it may even go further back in. It was definitely deeper. Um, looks like the roof is blackened by by ancient campfires, certainly. The roof is really dark. And so, yeah, so this is the, uh, I'm sure it's an ancient dwelling here on the shores of the Humboldt Sink. There we are, where there was Paiutes or redheaded giants in these caves is still yet to be determined. Um, but I'm gonna, now I'm gonna go out to the salt flat and then walk that direction. Well, I'm out here on the Alkali Flats it really is a remarkable place. There is nothing here. There's not a, there's not a road. There's not a footprint. You see, my foot, my footprint's the only ones out here. And so, yeah. So I was all on the side of that mountain, exploring caves and looking at burial mounds and looking at all sorts of stuff. So I thought I'd walk this uh, alkali flat. It's a really dry year. So. Uh, you might be able to see anything out here. Like if there was a a giant redhead cannibal giant's uh, skeleton laying in the alkali, probably still be here hundreds of years later, and uh, it, you might be able to spy it. So, so I'm just going to walk this. So I'm actually going to walk this edge in between the grass and the alkali right along this edge. So, uh, yeah, so 
I'll turn the camera on if I find anything interesting. I wonder what that is. Out there. I walked this alkali flat, and then uh, I, I actually didn't, I didn't see anything uh, interesting out here. Um, no skeletons, no skulls laying in the sand. Uh, so uh, I'm going to wrap it up. But just to recap, we went up to Lovelock Cave and saw the uh, uh, the smoke on the ceiling where they'd burned up the cannibal giants and we saw the, the area down in the corner where they probably would have huddled at their last stand. Then I was up here in these hills up here, found some burial mounds, some more caves, found those rock stacks, the, the stack of rocks, the trail, the ancient, the ancient, um, the ancient signposts found the ancient signposts that led the way to that observation platform or signaling platform. Lots of evidence of things going on out here in the desert. Didn't find the, the uh, giant skeleton like I wanted to, but it's not to say it's not out here. I won't find it next time. Or, uh, yeah, who knows what's in those hills around Lovelock Cave. See you next time.